Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, we're going to create this fun expanding background animation and learn a little bit about keyframes and background effects. So I'm just working on a new composition. You can use one of whatever size you want. And the first thing we're going to do is create a new background layer. So I'm going to go to layer new solid and it can be whatever color you want. So it doesn't really matter. So now that I have this black solid on my composition, I'm going to open up the animation presets and in here there's actually a bunch of nice starting points such as if I open up the synthetics folder there's this cool one called digital so if I throw that on there we can see in the effects control panel what this is all made up of so this one they're using a fractal noise posterized glow tritone and mosaic effect and I can actually turn on or off any of these effects and see what happens so it's actually kind of cool without the mosaic effect. But regardless, when I play this, it's just kind of like this digital noise effect. And if I even drop down this black solid into the effects panel, you'll see these dots mean there's keyframes on some of these effects. So we can see in the fractal noise effect, there's some keyframes on the evolution. And if I even continue dropping down, just some things about the rotation and evolution which I actually don't want necessarily. So I'm going to delete those. But regardless, uh, this starting point is something that you can kind of experiment and play around with. Whether you do go with the, the cells or the glowing dots. The first thing I want to do though is make this kind of animate in a scrolling way. Because we want it to infinitely scroll and loop. So what I'll do is I'll go to my effects panel and I'll search for one called offset. This is in the distort video effects folder and I can drag this right on top of my layer and it'll just appear in that effects control panel. These all work in order of operation. So first one happens and then as you go on the last effect is applied on top of everything. So what offset does is it allows you to shift the center of an image. In this case it's a cool way to just create an infinitely scrolling image by adding an expression. And the reason we're doing it with offset rather than just using the transform effects is because if we try to adjust the position, you see we're just moving the whole layer, whereas this is shifting the center within the layer. And when you're working with seamless types of images like this, it looks pretty seamless and infinite scrolling. So I'm going to find my shift center parameter in the effects control panel or in the actual layer effects. And I'm going to hold the option button and click on that stopwatch icon to open up the expressions panel for this expression. So since we have an X and a Y axis and I just want to affect the X only, we're first going to create a bracket and type in position. And then I'll do another open and close bracket zero and then comma position and I'll do one. So this is just saying so far that we have an X and Y position. We haven't done anything yet. I want to make sure there's no typos. Now if I want to just influence the X position, I can simply add onto that plus and I can do something like 200 times time. So this seem, might seem a little bit complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. All we've done is we said, take position zero, which is X. You see X and Y or zero and one or one and two, whatever. And add to it 200 times whatever the current time of the playhead is. So essentially what we're doing is adding 200 uh, points per second to the position. And as you can see, that'll create this slow scrolling effect. Because every one second we're adding 200 points to the position. And this will just go on forever, really. This number here can be pretty large, I believe, almost infinite. I don't see a time where you'd run into that issue. Now, if you wanted it to be slower, you could do something slower, like 1, 10, or 100 times time. That's only going to do 100 points per second. If you wanted to scroll faster, you could do more like 500 points per second, you get a faster scroll. So regardless of what you choose, this has accomplished a easy way to do an infinite kind of scroll without having to add two different keyframes 
from one to the other point of the center shift. Now, if I turn off like mosaic or something, you can see what it might look like in other ways. This is still kind of seamless. Um, you don't really see anything, but you do see some points where you see that shifting center edge. So you would just kind of want to make sure you are working with a seamless pattern. Another way to think about offsetting that would, would maybe be adding a CC Collider. This is like a kaleidoscopic effect. And that would just make everything seamless into a kaleidoscopic pattern. But you can definitely tell when something is kind of kaleidoscoped. It still kind of looks cool, but again, kind of different result for a different day. And if I even want, I can go back and add some expressions into the fractal noise evolution. So you see when, when you do that evolution, it kind of animates within those bars too. So I could do the same kind of thing. In this case, just hold option, click on that, and just do something like value equals, just say 100 degrees times time. So now we're getting a little bit of that cell jitter. You can play around with the timing, but this is, again, just a, a little trick. Um, might not be the most sophisticated. If you happen to be like an expressions master, tell me how you might have done it otherwise. But we've got this back and forth looping thing happening now. And now we can think about a cool way to stack it so it looks like it's expanding out from the center. So I'm gonna right click on this layer, change it to a 3D layer, and here's where I can adjust the X, Y, and Z position of it. I'll drop down the transform options, and I'll change the Y rotation so that it kind of is unfolding out from the center. And I can also change the orientation so that the Z position of the orientation is kind of at an angle, let's just say like a 45 degree angle. So if I do like a negative 45 on the Y and a 45 on the Z of the orientation, then I can just move the position or the anchor point over so that we are kind of on one diagonal half of the screen. And I can adjust the scale as well so we kind of expand out to the top. Another way that you can expand it out so it fills is in the effects panel, look for one called the Repetile. That's also in the stylized folder. If I add that, I can just expand up and down, kind of just fill out without having to adjust the scale. That can be an interesting way to do that. And I think I'll go with that in this case. Then I want to just copy and paste this image. So I'll just Command C and Command V to copy, paste, or duplicate that layer. And then on this new layer, I just wanna to go to the transform section and instead of having the Y rotation be negative 45, I can just make it 45 and change the anchor point to be going out the other way. So we've kind of intersected these, if you can think about it. Instead of being parallel, now they're kind of crossing. And I can just move the anchor point back to zero, really. And now we have two crossing points. It kind of created a fold. However, there's just a, a couple things I can tweak about the direction. So this kind of looks cool in itself. We have created a fold where one is bending into the other. Um, but if I wanted them to be each be going out different ways, I'll just take the original one. And on that offset expression, so if I drop down that animation, open that expression, I'll just add a negative 333 in front of, instead of a regular one. So instead of going forward, we're going to be going backwards 300 points every second. And now we've got this cool animation where things are flowing out of the center. And from here, you could adjust any of the parameters as well that you want. So, you know, if, if I wanted to adjust the mosaic tiles or, or take them off even, I could see what that might look like. If I wanted to change the color, that would be very easy as well. Again, you start to have your own problems when you don't have seamlessness. Um, you could think about just creating a gradient. So if I just create a new layer, layer new solid, and um, maybe even just do something like a beam, do a beam on this layer and change the starting and ending points. I could even just make this black kind of creating a little gradient almost. 
again, I'm really just experimenting. Um, there's not a really a right or wrong answer. Uh, you could maybe find more efficient or different ways to do, do different things. This is all about creative problem solving. And, you know, if I did want to change the color of this, I could go into that tritone and maybe go with a red instead of a green or a blue. And maybe I can even add a new adjustment layer over top of the whole thing and add a glow on top of that. So if we just use a, a stylized glow, I can increase the glow radius, the glow intensity, maybe even get a little bit more of that cool digital glowing effect happening. So ultimately you can play around with some of these ideas, adjust the angles and effects of things, and hopefully you learned a trick or two for whatever final results that you play around and come up with. You can check out dozens of other After Effects tutorials in the playlist on my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.